Whittle's engines were powerful enough to lift the Gloucester Meteor over seven miles into the sky at a speed of over 600 miles per hour. As groundbreaking as the jet engine was, the engineering behind it is surprisingly simple. In essence, the way the jet engine works is you have suck, squeeze, bang, blow. You suck air in at the front here, and then that passes through a spinning compressor. And that compressor squeezes the air down, increases the pressure and the temperature of the air before it passes in to the combustion chamber. Now, this is the point where the fuel is added and ignited. This increases the temperature and the pressure of the gas even further. And then all of those hot exhaust gases have to expand, speed up through the back of the engine, and they pass through this turbine. And the turbine is connected via a shaft down the centre of the engine to the compressor at the front, making that spin. But what pushes the engine forward, what generates the thrust, is the expansion and the acceleration of the exhaust gases out of the nozzle at the back of the engine. Whittle's jet engine allowed aircraft to fly faster, higher, and farther than ever before. Changing the face of aviation forever. couldn't exist before, so they had to develop and to design brand new engines to suit uh, what's required to have it going upstairs in, in the air. They're nearly 50 times more powerful than Whittle's jet engines. And draw in enough air to inflate a hot air balloon in three seconds. But for the engineering team behind this colossal plane, it wasn't just about power. The main difficulty is to define an engine that is powerful, that gives economy to the airlines, and reduce noise. Thanks to its state-of-the-art design, the A380 burns 22% less fuel per seat than the average 747 jumbo. These fan blades have been designed specially for this aircraft. They have a very revolutionary new shape to increase the airflow through the engine. 70% of the thrust from the engine actually comes from these blades and not from the motor itself, which is burning the fuel and, and turning these blades. The 24 hollow titanium blades are boomerang shaped with a reverse sweep at the tip. This shape slows the air from supersonic to subsonic speeds, making the A380 more fuel efficient per passenger than a car and also much quieter. This aircraft is well below the limits of noise for the size of the aircraft. 
basically setting the standard. The Airbus A380 is the biggest passenger plane ever built. Capable of flying non-stop for almost 10,000 miles. It's a triumph of aerospace engineering. Getting an aircraft of this size off the ground to fly practically halfway around the world is an engineering feat. The aircraft's huge traveling range is mind-boggling. It also presents designers with a unique challenge. The A380 is capable of flying from Dallas to Sydney non-stop. These lengthy flights require extra provisions for passenger comfort. Its two passenger decks provide almost 6,000 square feet of floor space. That's about three tennis courts. At a custom-built hangar in Paris, this Airbus A380 is being stripped down as part of its scheduled service, revealing its engineering secrets. It's quite impressive to fly on this aircraft. As you can see, it's a very long aircraft. In the business class, you have 80 seats. That's quite important. But designing an airplane for comfort isn't a new idea. One of aviation's earliest and most successful innovators set the bar. who took to the skies had little choice but to bundle up and brave the elements. But one man had a different idea. In 1913, Russian engineer Igor Sikorsky built the Ilya Muromets, a plane designed specifically for luxury travel. It was the world's first airliner. He used a wind-driven generator for electricity and ran pipes of hot air from the engine through the cabin for heat. There was also a bedroom, toilet, and comfy seats. 16 passengers could travel up to 370 miles in style. The Ilya was redesigned as a bomber to fight in the First World War but its luxurious legacy lives on and has led the way to a new world of aviation possibilities. Just like the Ilya Muromets over a century ago, the Airbus A380 has redefined air travel with its ability to carry hundreds of passengers in supreme comfort for over 10,000 miles. When you see at the aircraft outside, it's so big that when you come in, when you have a seat, you can imagine how loud it's gonna be when it's gonna take off. But in fact, no, it's quiet. And you don't even know you're in the air. But for a plane as immense as the A380, traditional building materials won't cut it. If the whole airplane had been made from the traditional aluminum, it would have been catastrophic to the design. So engineers had to revolutionize this approach too. The Airbus A380 is one of the most technologically advanced commercial airliners in the world. The technologies used in the design of this machine were not existing 20 years ago. 
But for its design team, redefining the limits of modern aviation meant overcoming some seemingly impossible engineering challenges. They told everybody in the world that they will build the, the biggest aircraft in the world, so it was quite a challenge for them. And one of their biggest challenges relates to the plane's record-breaking size. The forces that an airplane are subjected to on, on any flight are severe because it's having to expand, it's having to contract, it's having to deal with extreme temperatures. Even the aircraft is actually getting torsional effects on itself while it's flying through turbulent situations. Since the 1920s, aluminum has been the material of choice for aircraft skins. It's flexible, strong, and light. But when you're building the largest commercial airliner in the world, every ounce counts. Just the paint alone weighs half a ton. If the whole airplane had been made from the traditional aluminum, it would have been catastrophic to the design. It would be way too heavy. They would have had to have bigger engines. They would have had to have bigger wings. It would have burned a heck of a lot more fuel, and it wouldn't fly very far. Decreasing the weight by reducing the thickness of the aluminum skin wasn't an option. Engineer Ben Evans demonstrates why in his lab at Swansea University. So this gun is going to fire these baseballs at high speed at our target in the stand, and we'll find out how much damage they do. This aluminum sheet is approximately half the thickness of a traditional aircraft skin. Oh, wow, let's have a look and see what's happened. And there's the damage. It's deformed this by a good five centimeters or so. So really quite a lot of damage with that impact on the aluminium sample. The designers of the A380 needed a material that was as strong as traditional aluminum, but lighter. They needed to find materials that could create such a large aircraft that wouldn't weigh like a tank. Solving this engineering conundrum would have been impossible without the trailblazing work of a great engineer from the past. In the 1930s, American engineer Virginius E. Clark created an alternative to aluminum. He infused birch board with phenolic resin and laminated it under extreme heat. He called this new material Duramold. Used in Howard Hughes' enormous spruce goose seaplane, Duramold was one of the earliest and most successful examples of an aviation composite. Composites are made up of more than one material and take advantage of the best of both worlds. What we're going to do to prove this is the case is impact test a composite. This composite is a woven carbon fiber infused with epoxy resin. The same thickness as the aluminum Ben tested earlier. Woo! Literally nothing. So that impacted right here, bang in the middle. In fact, there is absolutely no sign that any damage has been done. So these are the results. This is the composite. This is the aluminium. The same impact force, but look at the damage on the aluminium. So that is a result for the composite. A lighter material and a stronger material. And that is why this stuff is being used by aerospace engineers today. To build the world's largest passenger plane, engineers took Virginius Clark's innovations with composites to the next level. They developed a brand new material for the Airbus A380, glare, reinforced with glass fiber. 
It's thinner than aluminum, 